Uh, I'm Francis Heiligen. I'm a research professor at the Vrije Universiteit Brussel, that is the Free University of Brussels, but the Dutch speaking part. I uh, lead a research group there on, that is called Evolution, Complexity and Cognition. Our main topic is self organization in the most general sense, that is, how does a complex system arrange itself, assemble itself spontaneously? By a complex system, that could mean any kind of a system that has this kind of internal organization. Could be a biological system, could be a physical system, could be a technological system, could be a society. But our paradigm is mostly the so-called complex adaptive system or multi-agent system. We assume that the system consists of agents, individual components that are active, meaning that they interact with the environment and that they have some kind of preferences or goals. If you put those agents together, they will start interacting among each other and out of this interaction typically some kind of an order will emerge. That means that there will be some kind of a coordination between the different activities with the result that the whole system becomes more organized in the sense that there is less conflict, more cooperation, more synergy, more stability. That is a kind of our general paradigm and that is my main topic of research. The paradigm I start with starts especially from this action. Action that means an agent senses or perceives something. In response it will perform an action. An action means it will change something in its environment. And once you have one action, this action will trigger another action because if one agent changes something in the environment, a second agent will experience, will notice this change, will in turn perform an action which will again make a change, which will in turn trigger one or more other agents to act and so you have a kind of a propagation of action, a kind of a wave of action that goes through the system and that typically settles in some kind of a stable regime, in some kind of an attractor. But in the meantime, all kind of interesting, surprising things can happen. And that is then what we call emergence or self-organization. Starting from the individual actions, you generally cannot predict what the total configuration will settle in, what the end result will be. So there the interesting point is, what are the characteristics of this individual action that leads to the global organization? And uh, one of the concepts that I work a lot with is the concept of synergy versus friction. Synergy means if one action of one agent and the action of another agent kind of mutually support each other. It's a kind of a generalized notion of cooperation. If the two agents together get a better result and they could each on their own, there is synergy. Friction is the opposite. That is where one agent performs an action that somehow undoes what the other agent has done. There is a kind of a conflict. They are in each other's way. A simple example is in traffic. If two cars try to cross the same narrow bridge, Neither of them wants to give priority, they are both stuck. That is friction or conflict. Synergy is when they agree about some kind of a rule, like for example, the one on the left starts first and they both can pass very easily. So my idea is that if you analyze interactions in terms of synergy and friction, you have a kind of a first start towards understanding where self-organization might come from. Very much so. It is an evolutionary process in the sense that it fulfills the two basic mechanisms of evolution, variation and selection. Variation appears because each agent performs an action which by definition changes something, but because the agent works locally, it doesn't know what the effects of its action are. So the variation is in a sense blind, like in blind variation, an agent make some change in the environment, but generally cannot foresee what the effects will be. The selection is in the fact that of all the different actions that an agent will perform, some may produce synergy, some will produce friction, and the natural selection will be that the synergetic ones are preferred. The synergetic ones lead to a stable system, a system that retains its structure, a system that's robust, 
while the friction-based interactions typically will kind of annihilate themselves, they are kind of self-destructive, so they get eliminated. So the basic dynamics is one of variation and selection, and that leads in the end to an evolution towards more and more organization. Yes, there definitely are obstacles, and these obstacles they are well known in a field that's called the evolution of cooperation. The typical example is the prisoner's dilemma. You have a situation in which each agent is tempted to cheat, to be selfish, to do something that will help itself but harm the other agent. But the net effect is that if both agents do the same, they both get harmed. So there is always this kind of temptation to be selfish, to think in the short term just about yourself. And that typically leads to friction. So evolution will need to overcome this tendency to selfishness, to cheating. And in the literature, many scenarios, many mechanisms have been proposed to overcome this tendency to selfishness. There does not seem to be a kind of a general solution, but there are many specific solutions which need to be discovered in each case. So the evolution means that there will be, need to be many trials, there will be many errors. Most of these trials may not lead to synergy, they may lead to friction. But sooner or later, some agent may discover a way of interacting that is synergetic and that leads to cooperation. Already since I was a child, been uh, fascinated by self-organization because self-organization is what you see in nature. For me, there's a very big uh, difference between a designed system like, let's say, a house or a car and a self-organized system like, let's say, a tree or a river or an animal. The self-organized systems always, to me, seems much richer, more surprising, more interesting, more detailed. The designed system, they usually have kind of structure at one level and it's very clear what that structure is, it's very predictable, it's very boring. While the self-organizing systems, they are endlessly fascinating because they continuously come up with new things, there are always new things to discover. So that for me emotionally has always had a very strong appeal, like these systems I see around me in nature, I see some rain that has uh, been streaming through the sun and it forms a system of little canals and channels, there is some kind of an erosion going on, it makes a very beautiful pattern. Where does it come from? Nobody has told the rain that it had to flow just in this particular space. I've always found it very fascinating as a child, and then as I grew up and started studying all the advanced methods in physics, mathematics, computing, I started to see how this intuitive, emotional thing that I felt could be translated into more scientific models. And that's kind of the origin of my whole worldview and also of this particular way of looking at self-organizing systems. I, I don't think so. That's, that's, a, that's a very common criticism that people have had about science that by analyzing what's going on, you kind of lose the wonder. But I don't believe that it's, it's, it's the same kind of criticism you can, can make towards a, a musician or a composer. Don't you lose the beauty of the music if you know exactly how a melody is formed and how the notes are formed? I don't think it does. I don't think it... There are many different levels of understanding and experience. And the fact that you understand something at one level in a kind of a more theoretical, formal way, doesn't mean that at an intuitive level you're not still enjoying it. And also the interesting thing about self-organizing systems, really the natural systems, is that they have so many levels that even if you understand one level, there are still so many others that you haven't yet started to grasp.